Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute split top box. It measures one and a half inches by one and a half inches by one and a half inches. And here is how fun this box opens. It has the split top and inside it I have two tea lights. This box will also fit a Ferrero Rocher, a Lindor truffle. The interior again is one and a half inches cubed and it's just a really great sized box. I want to give credit to two demonstrators, Kathleen Hopperstad and Martha Stewart. Kathleen in 2010 shared a box like this, but it was twice the size. It was a three inch cubed box, and so I decided to resize it so that it would fit smaller treats like so. I just love how this box goes together. It's all one piece, and so I'm gonna show you how fun and easy this is to make. We're gonna start with a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock that measures four and a half inches by six inches. And along the four and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at one and a half and three. Then I'm gonna rotate it to the six inch side and we're gonna score this at three quarters, two and one quarter, three and three quarters, and five and one quarter. And then we're gonna score just down to that first horizontal score line. We'll do that at one and a quarter and four and three quarters. Then I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees, so all the way around to the other side, and again, do one and a quarter and four and three quarters, stopping at that first horizontal score line, like so. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring in a template here. I hope you can tell on this template, I've got some darker lines here, and that is where we are actually going to cut our cardstock. There's two ways that you can do this. You can just use your paper snips, which is how I'm gonna do this. Otherwise, you can come in with your Stampin' Trimmer. And what's great about the Stampin' Trimmer, I'll show you on the template here, is you can then line up your score lines along that cutting groove. And then there is a ruler along this cutting guide here that you can then line up the pointer on the cutting blade and only cut in these sections. So if you prefer to use your Stampin' Trimmer for that, that is one way to do it. And again, you do the same thing on these shorter cuts. Line that up on the cutting groove using your stamp and trimmer blade and just cut down stopping at this line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you with my paper snips. I'm gonna start by cutting up these short score lines that we created. And I'm just cutting right down the middle of that score line. All right, so each of those are cut. Now we can kind of manipulate the paper I'm gonna turn it this way. We only want to cut this center section here. So I'm gonna make sure that I only cut up, stopping to that horizontal score line, and cut down, stopping at the horizontal score line. So let me show you. I'm just gonna fold paper out of the way. And again, I'm just gonna cut up to that horizontal score line. Sort of release that little tab there. Then, if it's easier, I just flipped my paper over. We'll fold this out of the way. And then I'm gonna cut just up to that horizontal score line. Like so. So then what you end up is you kind of have this barn door effect here. And that's exactly what we wanted to cut away. Showing the template one more time. So we cut here and on that short score line and that's it. So I'm gonna go in and do the rest of those. Okay, so now we have made all of those cuts, and the last cutting we need to do is these shorter sections here are actually gonna be tabs. So I'm gonna go in and notch all four of those pieces in like so. Just cutting off a little sliver from each side at an angle. And I'll do that to all four of the tabs. Okay, so now that looks like our template here. You can see we've got our little notches cut out and we've got these little kind of barn door looking things. Now we're gonna go ahead and adhere some designer series paper and this is the Needlepoint Nook designer series paper. I love how many colors come in this. And I've got four pieces that measure one and three eighths by one and three eighths and six pieces that measure five eighths by one and three eighths. So I've marked on the template, you can see these arrows 
This pattern from Needlepoint Nook does have a directional pattern. So I've indicated with an arrow up that that is the top of the pattern. I hope that that makes sense. So for example, we're gonna glue these down into these four square sections. There's only five square sections, but this middle one is actually the base of the box. So we don't need to adhere any designer series paper to that. But I think that you can see that these are all kind of going in this direction. So that's how I'm gonna glue those. Then these 5 eighths by 1 and 3 eighths inch pieces are going to go all the way along these three sections along the outside edge. Now, I want to put both of these going upwards and this one going the opposite direction. And that is just when we put this box together that you have all of your paper going in the right direction. So this will be the front of the box and we've got this paper going in the right direction on all sides of the box, like so. So I'm just gonna use my multi-purpose liquid glue and adhere all of these pieces to the box. Okay, we've got all the designer series paper adhered. I love how that looks with the Knight of Navy cardstock. And before we put the box together, we're gonna punch ribbon holes using the detailed trio punch so that we can tie our box together with a ribbon. So I'm gonna slide this in. This is the short end. I'm gonna slide this into the punch, pushing it all the way up to the guide. And then I think you can see this, but there's this line that goes down the front of the detailed trio punch. I am just eyeballing that to center in this center section. And then I'll punch. I'm going to turn this around and do the same thing, lining it up in the center, just eyeballing it and punching. So now we have those two ribbon holes ready to go once we put our box together. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is focus on these smaller tabs. I'm going to apply glue to the tab and then we're going to line up this score line with this cut edge like so to start to create that box top. So glue here, lining up that score line to this cut edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the first one and then I'll speed through the rest. So I've got glue on the tab. Then I'm going to feed that underneath but then lining this up for that nice sharp corner for the box lid. Because this is a small box, you wanna to try to be as precise as possible. But again, I'm lining it up to make that really nice corner there. And if you want to, you can press down from the inside. And then I'm just gonna continue to work on each of these smaller tabs, folding them in to create our split top lid. Okay, so there is our split top lid. Now to put together the center of the box. These edges are not gonna completely overlap. They're only gonna overlap by about a half of an inch. And so you just wanna pay attention to where the front of your box is, and this will be the front. I want this front tab to overlap the back tab. So I'm gonna put a little line of glue along the edge of the back tab, and that's the front side of the cardstock. Then I'll just put a little line of glue along the front, and that's the back side of the cardstock. So when these overlap, the glue will be on the right side of the paper. And I'm just eyeballing it, but trying to keep this top edge straight. So we've got a straight edge there. Do the same thing here again. This is the front of our box. Just fold stuff out of the way if you need to. So I'm gonna put a bead of glue along the front edge of the back tab and the back edge of the front tab. And then just overlap those two. Again, focusing on trying to keep this edge straight to square up the box as best we can. Like so. So here is how the box is going to go together. How cute is that? Oh, I love it. Adorable. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and put in our tea lights. Again, this can hold many things. We'll go ahead and close the lid there. It is gonna be a snug fit, but I kinda of love how you can still see this peeking through here. All right, so now I'm gonna grab the beautiful Berry Burst Metallic Edge Ribbon, and we're gonna feed it through one of the ribbon holes and through the other, and we'll go ahead and tie this in a bow.
And there is our adorable split top box. I love how it turned out. I did not add a sentiment to this box, but you could certainly add a circular sentiment to the front and just add a dimensional to one side so you can make sure that the box opens. Or you could add a sentiment to the side. And I just think this is a really sweet gift to give. You can change it up with so many different colors and sentiments for all different occasions. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I use today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my newsletter as well as my blog updates, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in earning a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies, and you can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you give this project a try, I'd love to see it, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag PaperPixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.